Okay, so let's take a look at uh, this question number three in unit four. Uh, it's another optimization problem. So here we have a, a student who is um, looking to return to school in the fall, uh, but currently has two jobs. So if we look through all the information here, we have to define um, the two variables. So we've got two jobs here, so we can say x can be equal, the, equal to the number of hours um, uh, in the first job. Okay, and then we'll define another variable, y, to be the number of hours okay, in the uh, second job. So that'll give us our two variables that we need to look at. Then we have some constraints. Um, so the total hours worked, we can't be um, more than 38 hours. So we could be less than or equal to 38, but we can't be more than 38. So that's one of our inequalities. Um, for job one, the value can, um, cannot exceed 30 hours. So X has to be less than or equal to 30. And then job two, we need a minimum amount of hours, which has got to be 16. So we can be greater than or equal to 16. So those are our three equations that we would get out of um, uh, the, this problem. Now there is one other equation that we should look at trying to identify right now, and that's the objective function that we're, we would try to optimize. Um, it says here that at one job she earns sixteen seventy-five per hour, and at her second job it's fourteen seventy-five per hour. So we could add one other equation at the bottom here. This would be the cost or the revenue equation. So that's equal to sixteen seventy-five times the number of hours worked at job one plus 14.75 times the number of hours worked at job two. Okay, so this is one other equation that even though they don't ask for it, it's something that we'll probably need um, in the future because we have our constraints, but we also then need to optimize our values um, into our cost or our revenue equation here. So then moving on to the other question here, we now have to graph the system. So again, this is one of those e problems where the, the numbers are getting a little bit larger. We have you know, 30 and 38 to, to graph them. So I'm gonna switch over to the Desmos tool again. Okay, and just to speed things up, I pre-entered the equation. So we have X plus Y is less than 38, X is less than 30. Y is greater than or equal to 16. So if I look at this equation, I'll just zoom out here. Um, you can see there are the three boundary equations that we have. Now the ones that are where we have X is greater than 30, that means Y can be anything, or sorry, less than 30, Y can be anything. That's the vertical line that you see, and Y is greater than or equal to 16 is the horizontal line. So the line that the angle is the X plus Y equation. So we want to find the region where everything overlaps. Okay, so I'm just going to pinch and zoom in here. Okay, and it's this triangle that you see that's fairly darkly shaded. This is where the only section where all the three regions would overlap. So what we want to do here is isolate the corner points that make up this shape because this is where we are, will be optimizing our, our values in the equation. So one of the points that we have is 0, 016. The other point that we have here is um, 0, 038. And then the other point here that's um, not on the axis is 22, 16. Okay, so those are our three points that we are going to be looking at plugging into the graph to optimize. So if I go back to the question here, okay, so we do have our graph, which we can just say um, plot um, on Desmos, um, just because it'll be a little bit neater and more accurate. And then it says, how many hours should Michaela work at each job? So what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to maximize income. Okay, for, our, for the work here. So we have essentially three possible choices. We could work zero hours at the first job and then 38 at the other one, zero and 16. Okay, and then the other coordinate pair is 22 and 16. So what is the maximum amount of money that Michaela can earn per week? So what we want to do is maximize our objective function. So if we bring the equation down from what we wrote previously, 1675x plus 1475y, 
Okay, so if we look at our first two coordinates here, um, both x's are going to be zero. So if we were to look at the first pair, this is going to be 1675 times zero plus 1475 times 38. Okay, so all we have to do is multiply 1475 times 38, and that's equal to $560. $560.50. So that's how much we could make by just working at, at the one job. So then we'll look at the other equation. Okay, so we'll put in, um, well, if we put in 0 and 16 for our second equation, we're going to be making much less than 560. So 0, 0.38 would be the one that would make the most amount of money at this point. But then we have to check the other equation. So we have 1675 times 22 plus 1475 times 16, okay? And then if we plug those, equa those values into the equation, we'll see that we get a value of $604.50. So out of the three points, this is the one that produces the combination where we can maximize our income based on all our constraints and based on the rates of pay that are um, being offered in this, in this uh, problem. Okay, so this is how you would look at this question um, fully from all sides. Um, again, the graphing component is, is critical to this because you're trying to find the region um, where all those constraints overlap and then it's the boundary edges of those constraints um, where you will find your maximum and minimum values here. All right, so hopefully that helps um, in explaining this problem.